Yeah, so the uh, open source compilers, GCC and uh, GNU, uh, GNU, is uh, the group, the project group that uh, took care of it. So Linux is name of a project that uh, created the operating system, the kernel, whereas GNU is a, a group of um, programmers that were creating uh, utilities open source utilities. Now those utilities were there before the uh, Linux system ever, ever came about, so, right? But um, uh, basically most of the utilities that we have today on Linux are made by the, the GNU project. So GNU created GCC. So uh, how, why was GCC so important? What was revolutionary about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was the first compiler that was without cost. It, it was free. Now here's why it was so important. Okay. If you're going to have a GNU project talking about free software, but every time you create software, you have to use a paid compiler, right? So that assumes that, hey, before I can ever run Linux or before I can ever run Apache, I have to pay Borland, or whoever else has got a, a C++ compiler, I have to pay them. Well, wh where's the free software you know, in that? So GNU, uh, GNU GCC was a, a groundbreaking project because it allowed people to have that compiler in their hands that was free to start with. And then you can take other so open source uh, projects and compile them for free as well. And that's what made things free. What do you say, Terry? OK, yeah. Well, but GCC uh, does not have uh, IDE by default because it, it's, it's, it's just being automated in, in very many different ways. OK, here is how the GCC compiler works. First of all, GCC is, uh, is, the, is the command, right? So you just say uh, GCC, and it says no input files, which is correct. So GCC-V tells me, hey, Here's the version that I'm running. Uh, I was compiled with, this, with these options, and all of that is important. But if you want to compile a C++ program, then you have to have the source code first. I'm going to run, uh, run. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to <coughs> write <coughs> a C++ program for you. VI is uh, just a text editor, so that has nothing to do with it. But we'll call this CO246.C. It's important that C++ files have .c extension. Uh, it's important to the compiler. And so we'll go ahead and do that. And uh, we'll say, um, OK, this is uh, void main. So uh, the, this particular main function is not going to return like an integer or a float. And uh, we'll say something like printf uh, welcome, welcome to uh, C++ program. Okay. Aye, aye, aye. Perfect. Close. And uh, I'm going to save it. Okay, that is a very, very not advanced uh, C++ program. It's going to basically uh, say hello to us. So when I exit and I go to say, okay, GCC, go ahead and compile uh, this program for me and to uh, make a program out of it called C2, uh, CO246 and uh, the source file of course is right here and any complaints it says warning warning right my um, style there is not uh, very clean in that program but it does create an executable program this program now I can simply execute I can run it and then display stuff. I'm going to improve it by adding a few uh, new lines, new lines like this. I will recompile it, right? And now I'll rerun it. That's how we go from a source code into a compiled program. And so the compiled program now 
is of binary type. If I was to do, uh, go ahead and uh, show me what's inside of CO246, right, that is not easily understood by human beings or edited. All right, so this is what we're talking about when we talk about the compiler. It was now the program that could take you from something that you can modify the source code and make it runnable. Now you have to run the compiler on every uh, architecture uh, of the processor. So let's say that you compile something in 32-bit environment. Okay, you need to compile it in 64-bit environment so that it's the same source code, but you have to compile it in both so that the executable runs properly. Or if you compile it uh, uh, on an Intel, but now you want to run it on, uh, on, uh, on uh, some Motorola uh, processor, you'd have to do that as well. All right? Okay, any questions about the compiler? All right, we will actually be using uh, a wrapper for the compiler called uh, AutoConf. And uh, it, is, um, it is a project that allows us to run a command called make. When we say make, it is going to go through and, and figure out where to put GCC in motion, what needs to happen, how the source code needs to be moved around, and then compiled. But GCC is, is, is the big thing, is, is what created um, you know, the whole momentum before, uh, before, behind open source. All right, very well. I'd like to mention one more thing, in, 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 uh, and uh, we'll, we'll close uh, uh, business for today. I want to mention uh, uh, Twitter to you, okay, because <coughs> one thing that open source does, and they do it well, is they communicate over the internet often through something called the IRC channel. Developers on different projects will do that. Uh, but today, a lot of communication takes place through Twitter. And it would be um, beneficial for you to find people who talk about technology in a respectful way, in, in a way that, uh, that, that benefits you, and then follow them so that when you complete this class, Right? Even though the skills will probably last you a little bit, um, you can follow people who look at Apache, who look at PHP, at different technologies we are looking at, and then update you on the new things that are happening. Now, I, I use Twitter uh, to track different classes. I tweeted here about CO232, uh, about uh, CO241, but also 246. Right? So if you were to look for CO246, all right, you can see different things that, uh, that, uh, that I mentioned. And uh, specifically, I was talking here about operating systems. Okay. All right, any questions so far? All right, very good, very good. So, for next week, it's important that you do a couple of things. Number one, on page 18 in the textbook, there's, there's, uh, there's a list of modules, okay? So again, start looking at the modules in Apache so that you can identify your favorite fairly early and, uh, and that uh, as we do the different labs, uh, that, that you know how it might plug in and so your presentation then will have uh, some substance to it. Uh, secondly, uh, please make sure to read chapter one, okay? If you're ever wondering what it is that we'll be doing next week or what, what you should be preparing, you can always click under course information at the uh, course schedule. And so then it will tell you on a specific date what it is that we're doing, right? Um, the project that's homework for today is looking at the modules, just studying them. Okay, there's no, uh, uh, no paperwork coming with this one. Uh, I'd like you to uh, read chapter one. And we talked about NOPIX today. We talked about introduction to Apache. Next week, this is what we're doing, okay? We will talk more about HTTP. 
we will talk uh, a little bit about Apache uh, on Windows and Linux, and then we'll go ahead and do an installation of Apache. All right? All right, good deal. And so from here, you can, you can figure out the, uh, the other parts. All right, well, thank you very much for, uh, for your attention, for, uh, for uh, uh, your patience with some of the uh, VMware glitches and otherwise. Take the CDs with you. Make sure to bring them back. And um, they should work at home without VMware. Okay? You, if, if you have problems, like in this classroom, for example, the network cards are not coming out, right? They're not coming out. <laughs> Your CD-ROM is not opening. Uh, the network cards are not, not working with this version of Napix, so that's why we're using VMware. Uh, so you will, have to, uh, you will have to close the VMware first uh, before the computer will release. There you go, yeah. <laughs> uh, the nice thing is that if you can put this CD-ROM into a computer with 3D graphics, then it will enable 3D graphics on the desktop, and you will be able to move it uh, 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 like, a, like a cube. Yeah. So, uh, so if you have opportunity to run it on a computer, I think some of the Dells here at school allow you to do that. So, yeah. Well, very good. So I'll see you next week. Feel free to email me if you have any questions, and we'll resume at that point.